Movement literature defines three planes of motion. Number one is the sagittal plane. These are movements that happen inside this plane of motion, like a bench press, a clean, or a press. Number two is the frontal plane. These are movements that happen here, right in front of us. Are you coming up with an exercise yet? It's pretty hard, right? One of the exercises that come to mind for me is a 360 clean or a mace front or back swing. Finally, we have number three, the transverse plane. Movements that rotate the body inside this sphere. One of the exercises that might come to mind is a kettlebell windmill or a bench press. 90% of exercises happen in the sagittal plane. Now there's nothing wrong with it. Yet, if we neglect the frontal and the transverse plane, we might be missing out on functional strength, rotational strength, or just actual movement patterns that our bodies are capable of doing. Now here's the reason why these two planes of motions are neglected. Most of the exercises loaded with weights that you do inside the frontal and the transverse plane require an advanced level of skill. So if you have already mastered these sagittal exercises and you're looking for something new to either spice up your training or gain some additional powerful benefits, then this video is for you. But before we get started, I want you to join our free 50k giveaway. Get a chance to win lifetime access to our online kettlebell courses valued over $2,000. Link is in the description. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Leberstag hier. These 10 exercises are moving inside the frontal as well as the transverse plane. The first six exercises that I'm gonna show you are done with the kettlebell. And the final four exercises are done with the mace. Exercise number one is the windmill and it belongs into category number three, rotational or transverse plane of motion. Watch. Here's how we do the exercise. Shoulder with stance, cleaning the kettlebell up, pressing it overhead, pointing both of my feet to the right or to the left respectively, depending on the side I'm working. Now from this point, I push my hips to the right side, and now I look up to the kettlebell, I rotate my T-spine towards you now, my left arm reaches for my left leg, now I descend with my upper body down to the floor until my fingers touch the floor, and then I come back up. The windmill not only trains your obliques, these are your abdominal muscles on your left and your right side which are responsible for rotation and a host of other muscle groups, but also straight arm strength. Straight arm strength means how long can I keep the arm extended, elbow fully locked, shoulder packed, arm close to the ear, with weight overhead resting on my frame without the elbow caving in on the shoulder. Caving in. Exercise number two is the 180 clean or the 180 snatch. And now we move into the frontal plane. Here's the 180 clean. Here's the 180 snatch. Here's how I do the exercise. I clean the kettlebell up. And now I want to drop it in that front circle motion by extending the arms sideways and then switching the grip so that I catch the handle with my hand so that my thumb is pointing towards me. Boom. And then I let it rotate like a clock in front of me. And as I pull it back up, I have to insert my hand and my wrist inside the kettlebell window approximately on that level as I pull the kettlebell back up. Here's an important piece that you need in order to safeguard your lower back. As I drop the kettlebell in that frontal plane and it drops, I push my hips back and I'm hinging. And now my T-spine is rotating and I wanna keep my lower spine as safe as possible by not rotating at all, at least to a certain extent. And as I pull it back up, I extend my legs again and pull the kettlebell close to my body. As I drop the kettlebell to the right, I tilt my body to the left. As the kettlebell crosses my knees, I tilt my body to the right. And as I 
pull it back up again, I'm tilting to the left. This is what we call using your upper body as leverage. Exercise number three is the 360 clean. We use the same biomechanical fundamentals from the 180 clean with the only difference is that now we are drawing a full circle. And again, we're traveling inside the frontal plane. The 360 clean also works in the other direction. As I drop the kettlebell to the right, body leans to the left, kettlebell traveling in front of my knees. As soon as I reach this position, approximately on chest level, I insert my hand inside the kettlebell window and then pulling the kettlebell close to my starting position. Here's the vital difference. There's no hinging going on. I'm not only feeling it in the oblique section of my abdominal rotational muscles, but I most definitely feel it in the backside of my upper body in the shoulder girdle area. Exercise number four is the Turkish get up. And this exercise is unique. First of all, it's a flow. We combine different exercises into one and it works all three movement planes. The sagittal, the transverse, as well as the frontal plane. If you've been carefully observing the exercise, you might have noticed we're not just training all three planes of motion, but again, we train straight arm strength. I'd like to start overhead. Now, with my left leg or my right leg respectively, if I work with the other side, I engage into a curtsy lunge. Now, from this position, I open up the hips. I reach down for the floor, floor into a kneeling windmill. I bring my rear leg to the front, Connecting to the floor with my heels, now down on my hips, down on my elbows, and now I distribute the weight between my left elbow and my right foot to get on my back slowly and safely. Arm goes down, half of the exercise is finished. I press the weight back up, making sure the shoulder is tight and packed. Now I shift my whole body weight via my right foot to the left elbow and swivel around the weight. Boom. Now I go up on my hands. Now I push the hips up, I pull my front leg in and rotate the hips. And from this position, I shift my body weight to the heels and I turn my rear leg to the front and then I stand back up. Exercise number five is the suitcase farmer's walk. This is the exception of all of the exercises that I'm showing you because it's low tech. It doesn't require a lot of skill, but it still gives you a lot of bang for your buck working in the transverse. Plane. Matter of fact, the exercise is so simple that it doesn't need a lot of explanation. I have the kettlebell right next to me, do a suitcase deadlift, hinging, straight back, grabbing the kettlebell, stand up, and now I start walking. And I want to cover the distance that I have in my head, and as soon as I've covered it, I want to switch sides. So here's what's happening. The kettlebell is pulling me down, and my stabilizer muscles have to work. So again, we are, even though in a slightly isometric way, working in this movement plane where our body wants to rotate and we have to make sure to have our anti-rotation brakes in place. Exercise number six is the bend press, one of the hardest exercises that you can do with a kettlebell. However, after the windmill, it's one of the greatest exercises to engage into the transverse plane and build some solid rotational strength. It's actually better to use heavier weight because with lighter weight, you'll always be thinking that you want to press the weight. But the idea is that you want to extend the elbow and flex the shoulder. At the same time, you are descending with your upper body, reaching down to the floor as far as you can in order to extend or fully extend the arm and then standing back up. Sounds kind of like a circus act, but it's actually a great way to press heavy weights 
overhead if you do it the proper way. So now I clean the kettlebell into the rack position. Here's what I have to do. I now rack my elbow, all the weight, on my lats. That's behind me. And now I point my feet to the left side. I also turn my palm a little bit towards me. And as I'm going down, I'm descending with my upper body. I slowly extend the elbow joint. And as I reach this bottom position, I want to shift the shoulder a little bit inside my center of mass. And now from this point, I can stand up safely and rack the weight back down. This final adjustment of the shoulder and by extension the arm is highly important because you only want to stand up from this bottom position if your arm as well as the kettlebell is inside your center of mass. Now let's jump into the mace, which I believe is one of the greatest tools to produce a lot of synovial fluids inside your shoulder joint, which adds to shoulder health. And the exercise that we're going to take a look at is the front swing, which moves inside the frontal plane. Depending on the side you want to swing first, I now have chosen the right side, you want to have the proper grip. This means if I swing to the right side, my right hand is above my left hand and I grab the mace in the bottom part of the handle. Now if I want to swing to the right side, I drop the mace to the right, engaging into a so-called saber grip, then I let the mace rotate fully, enjoying that beautiful swing. And then I pull it back up and as the mace come back, comes back up, I always want to come back to my center of mass which sits around my hips. Now if I do the other side, I have to switch grips. Now my left hand is above and now I can swing to the left side. Now here's what I've learned from the Flowing Dutchman. He says, as you are swinging the mace, you are creating chaos, but you still want to engage into a controllable chaos. This means as soon as the mace has done its swing and its 360 pattern or whatever have you, you want to come back to your center line in order to create control. Exercise number seven is the backswing with the mace. And as the name implies, we're now swinging the mace behind our back. It's a similar concept like we're swinging the mace in front of us, which means we are moving again in that frontal plane. The backswing is a little bit more complicated than a front swing, but it engages into a primal mechanism that I really love and enjoy, and that is this shielding. You want to think about that you are shielding yourself from an attack and I want to explain to you how this looks like and how your elbows have to move. Now with my imaginary mace now in my hand, I want to swing to the left side behind my back. I bring my right elbow up as if I want to shield myself from an attack and my left elbow now crosses my center line. Now my right elbow goes behind my head and the back swing happens when both of my elbows are at the same level. Now, if I want to move the mace back up, the reverse happens. My right elbow now comes to my center line and my left elbow is now into that guarding stance and now I close inside the center line, which is approximately at my hip. Exercise number nine is the 360 swing. Now we combine the front swing with the backswing and of course we're still moving in that frontal plane but since we are moving around our head our rotational muscles have to do some stabilizing so from my point of view we are engaging to a certain extent inside the transverse plane as well So here's what's happening with my hands as well as my elbows as I engage into the full 360 swing. I swing to the right side, so you remember right hand is on top of the handle at the bottom part of the handle of the mace. It drops, I let it do its thing, engaging in the saber grip. Now I complete that full 
frontal plane swing. And now I want to shield myself with the left elbow. So my left elbow comes up once I finish the swing. My left elbow shields my body. My right elbow comes to the center line. Now I go behind my head. Now both elbows are level. This means the mace is in a full swing. And then I pull it back by shielding myself with the right elbow again. And the left elbow comes towards my center line. And then I finish it in the middle. And if I want to, I can keep going, creating this infinity loop. Number 10, the side swing with the mace is special because it involves the transverse plane as well as the sagittal plane. Now with the side swing, I want to make sure that my right hand sits above my left hand at the bottom part of the mace, just like we did it in the front swing. Now the difference is I'm rotating my body to the right so that my left shoulder now looks towards you. And now I look to the right side and now I let the mace drop right at the side, catching it in the middle, or I stay in that movement plane. And if I want to switch sides and create this infinity loop, I have to drop the mace and then I immediately have to switch the grip and then I can create this side swing with the left and the right side at the same time. As soon as you have mastered these two hand versions, here's where the fun starts because now you can start delving into single hand movements. And here's where I'm having the most fun with the mace because now I am iron cladding my shoulder with these swing variations of the mace, which I believe are unique to this powerful training tool. Finally, I want to give you a simple and yet powerful workout recommendation, and that is do all 10 exercises for one minute each. This equals about 10 minutes of work. Use as much rest as needed and split the volume equally between left and right. Here's the next thing that you have to do. Like the video, consider subscribing, share it with a friend, and then go watch this video. We're all about kettlebells. And you've heard me talking about the three planes of motion. And you want to cover the sagittal plane that we train in the most often, most definitely. And you can do this right here with a simple beginner's tutorial where I cover the most important basics that you need to know when you jump into the kettlebell for the first time. So go watch it right now.